Hello everyone, my name is Griff, and today we're going to be going over not only Chapter 19 Part 1, but also the new information relating to Vania's event. So, this dropped today, uh, kind of out of nowhere really, honestly, and it's not even going to, the event's not even going to happen until the 28th, but I thought I would quickly just go over this event because it did drop. The name of the event is Rage of Chthonius, and I'm going to go over this quickly first, simply in case there are people who don't want spoilers for chapter 19 or anything like that. So if you're here just for this part, I'll just go over this quickly, and then I'll go over chapter 19 afterward. But to go over this event very quickly, um, the name of the event is Rage of Chthonius, and the, the basic gist of it, and I'll open this up right here. Apprentice seeking bloodkin, a war god dispatched by the heavens. These two surpass the bond of fate and converge at the past judgment on an artificial dragon that trifles with time's laws. Okay, but no one understands a word of that, so just ignore him and I'll play bloodkin, because I'm everywhere, which is great. Coming soon to Gaia Lost, Rage of Chthonius. Behold the power in my right. No, I'm out of time? So, this is a raid event against Chthonius, and it's not actually against normal Chthonius, it seems to be advanced. Kronos Nyx, which is the actual kind of hidden raid boss of the first anniversary. The according to like every preview of the actual first event, it was just the giant Kronos, which was slamming his hands down and stuff. I believe this is actually the first time we've seen art of Kronos Nyx in this form. And the interesting thing apart about this event is that we actually in there is an event trailer that I'm not going to put in this video because I don't want to get in trouble with Nintendo on anything online. Um, but you can go to the Nintendo mobile page and see it. They go over the three characters that are part of this event that were teased originally in the Dragalia Digest this month. So to start, let me go and scroll over this again. And as I said, this event's not starting until the 28th. You have Vania here. And Vanya is Vampy, obviously. You have Grimir, who I believe is the god of war. I believe that's what they say here, a, god, a war god dispatched by the heavens. And then they tease the dragon being a dragon called Rose Queen. So, I, it's not who I thought it was going to be. I really thought that they were going to pull her sibling in. And from my understanding, this isn't her sibling. Her sibling's the one that's located in her art. This is someone else. But the important thing about this is that this is a raid event. And usually in raid events, we get the welfare character being showcased in this art right here. Like you, you see this art, it has a bunch of teammates. One thing to note about this art is that there's uh, units of every element. And when they do event previews like this, when they do these arts, the type of the units always matches the type of units you'll use in the raid. Basically, it just proves that this is a multi-element type raid. So very much like the B original, very much like the Pecarine event, this is a multi-element type raid, you'll be able to use whoever you want. But notably, you have Vanya and Grimir here, who, Grimir has a lance and appears to be a special weapon skin, and Vanya appears to have no weapon at all. And at no point have they announced the types of the units, they will announce the type of units when this banner ends here. So, we won't get that for a couple days, at just straight up, but it's... It's pretty interesting that they're not showing any weapon for Vania. And the reason I say this is because in lore, in Grand Blue Fantasy, in I believe even like Shadowverse, she attacks using bats. Very similar to the way that Mine attacks in Dragalia Lost using butterflies. And if I can find Mine, I can go over that very quickly. She attacks, she's technically a bone unit, but her passive makes her attack with butterflies instead of arrows. And I'm imagining that Vania will work in a very similar way, except she'll be using bats, and that's why we can't really see a weapon type here, because if we look at the art again, you can very clearly see his weapon, but you can't see hers at all. There's just nothing in her hand. And it, it you know, it's an interesting proposition for them to put out a character like this. It's going to be a semi-collab character. This event isn't listed as a collab, unfortunately, but it is... You know, I think it's being treated as one almost. We don't have a proper giant collab that we usually do in April, but I still feel like this will be considered a collab. There hasn't been any word on, again, the banner at all, whether or not these units will be limited or anything like that, or how long this event will be going on as a whole. But, you know, you can usually just take the information as we get it, with these kinds of things and again this is six days before the actual event this event's coming at the end of the month so we still have time to know all these things it's not coming tomorrow it's not coming really anytime soon so 
If you're interested or if you're confused about any of this, you'll have plenty of days to catch up on it. But this all did drop last night, which I wasn't expecting. It dropped right at reset. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. And I'm excited to face this version of Nyx, cause, or Kronos rather, because this is my favorite version of him. I really liked this fight. And I feel like this might be when they put Kronos Nyx into the endgame bosses. Because currently, they've kind of given us this promise of we have the Morsiades Reckoning, which is an endgame raid boss that's tied to an, uh, an anniversary raid per se. Kronos Nyx is already in the event compendium through the first event. I believe you can fight him in there. I'm not 100% sure. I did this event a long time ago, but though the two raids that are there are Fractured Future and Forgotten Truths. So I feel like with this advent of him being rerun as not not I believe in the Pecorine event he had a different name. This time it is considered Kronos. Like it literally the the Event name is Rage of Kronos, which I believe is actually a callback probably to Rage of Bahama. It's probably like a, a like a title swap because these characters are from Rage of Bahama, if I understand the game correctly. So all in all, I think this is a pretty interesting event. The event song is Simple Answers, which uh, you can hear in the event trailer, which is it's pretty good. I like it. So all in all, I'm super excited for this event. Now I'm going to start talking about chapter 19, so if you have not read chapter 19, if you're not caught up in the story, you can click off now, and thank you for watching, please make sure to like and subscribe, all that stuff, but now I'm going to talk about chapter 19. Before I get into the actual story of chapter 19, there is something that's probably even more important than the actual story itself. Upon adding chapter 19 last night, they updated the, um, the draconic essence listed, and they added five new dragons. Three of these are kind of just meh, to be honest. The first one is the Flame Dragon, and he is a Prime Strength Dragon. Haster is also a Prime Strength Dragon. Of course, St. Phoenix is a Paralysis Dragon, which is kind of, you know, on the list. It's probably like the third most popular on this list, of or importance on this list. But the big two hitters are Azazel and Gaiden Cryonet. Gaiden Cryonet, or GNC, is the probably premier water dragon or at least was the premier water dragon for what they could do so i'm going to quickly go over their kit they uh they increase strength and they have this ability called water recharge or skill recharge 2. the users are tuned to water fills 35 percent of the skill gauge after using that skill huge 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 on top of that they have dazzling dance floor which creates a buff zone that lasts for 10 seconds that gradually fills the skills of adventurers inside it so it, you know, it, this character was probably the most meta-influential dragon pre-Curse of Nihility. After Curse of Nihility, she's kind of been nerfed because the in any fight with Curse of Nihility, her actual buff won't work. But her passives will. And her passive is literally one of the strongest abilities in the game. Because you can put it on a healer, and the healer will get recharged. You can put it on your DPS unit, and you have 35% more uptime. Those kinds of things are huge. And for them to put it in the essences, it's going it, to... It's, it's a huge thing. I currently have one copy that's uh, that's dragon. That's not dragons. I currently have one copy that's fully unbound, and I have a second copy with two unbinds. And I'm planning on taking this second copy to four unbinds and using it on my team because she's just that good. Like they literally are probably an as far as dragon skill as a whole, they are an S tier dragon in my opinion. The other one that's huge is Azazel. Now Azazel is the classic skill haste HP damage uh, not not damage but skill haste and hp buffing unit and buffing dragon and he's really popular on probably the two most meta influential units within shadow themselves which are grace and patia for double buff shenanigans basically a lot of the time you want to run to azazel if you can but for a long time you know that was basically using eight sunlight stones this azazel i have here I got one copy of and I used four sunlight stones on him because he was that good that that is how good this dragon is in my opinion he was one of the best dragons in the class again kind of nerfed by Nihility since buff meta is kind of dead you know you don't see Patias and Graces running along all that often but outside of Nihility meta the, the, the it, it's non-comparable how good these dragons are and uh, for that reason, I'm doing these two daily, regardless of what happens in the future, regardless of if Nihility completely wipes them. These are two dragons I feel are a must in your collection that you can have if you have the base forms. They're it, one of the best dragons in the game, in both cases. 
But that's just what my opinion on it. It's interesting that they're adding these. Hopefully they'll add more in the future. The real one I want to see added in the future is Ariel because I have a zero unbound Ariel. So for personal reasons, I just want her because I I don't want to spend four some like stones on her, but I will if I have to. But she's probably the last dragon that I really care about in the essences that makes sense to be added in the essences. But all in all, let's go back into the story as we have it. So at the start of this story, we meet this character here who's on the side of the screen as well named Jin. And his actual name is Jin Lorda. And we end up finding out that Jin Lorda is the son of Finn Lorda and it's actually the current king of the fairy kingdom. And this kind of is displayed in a way as saying that like Jin Lorda meets up with Nedric who, and Valix and Zethia who are at the bottom of the world tree and they're going up the world tree to get the Dawn Shard and basically the tree's locked and... Zethi is kind of like, oh, how are we going to get there? And Nedric kind of like, just like, shut up, you'll find out eventually. And then Jin Lorda shows up and he leads them up. But it previews this, it gives us a brief window of him talking about the actual truth of Yudin. And he says, I'm going to tell you the truth while we're going up the tree. And then it cuts away to our group of friends who are here. In doing this, we kind of get this like perspective like, oh, whoever this character is at the time, we don't actually know that he's the son of, uh, or we know that he's the king, but we don't know he's the son yet. It kind of gives us this perspective of this guy knows something. Then we jump to the party. The party's in the front of the fairy kingdom. They're just like, oh, look at all these people. All these people aren't out. And they're kind of surprised that no one's out and about. And Finn Lord is speaking through his like spirit portal window thing. He's just kind of like a light next to them. It's like, I'm afraid our king has brought people inside. And Gabtov's kind of like, hmm, that's kind of questionable. Because according to Gabtov, who hasn't known this guy, hasn't seen this guy, rather, in a long time, but knows him very well, he's kind of like, aren't you king? Aren't you the guy who's supposed to be in charge of everything? So, as they're standing there talking, a bunch of androids come out. Laxie kind of gets perturbed by this, because she's like, these people shouldn't even have androids in the first place. And Finn Lorda kind of explains how they found these androids, and they repaired them, and they're using them. So then you fight these androids. It then jumps to them being essentially saved in a way by Aha and Otoho where they are being overrun and Aha and Otoho basically swipe down these androids and basically put them out of submission and Aha and Otoho start screaming about you know what they scream about which is about Laxie being a puppet and the two of them sharing one heart and all this junk about freedom you get to fight them twice it's the same thing that we've done in the last couple of chapters where you know you fight the person you beat them and then they expand the pharaoh shroud you fight them again the whole nine yards and kitten caboodle but at the end of this you get the parallel of laxi and ahana toho and laxi basically points out the fact that their idea is flawed in freedom because they're comparing freedom to someone else the basic idea is that they want to feel free and by looking at people who they see don't have freedom they feel more free themselves and Laxi's kind of like this is stupid you should just be free for yourself when this happens reborn Agony shows up, gonna probably be on focus in a week, gonna probably be on the same banner as Vampy. So, hey, if you wanna go summon on that banner, that'd be awesome. Um, he shows up, he looks crazy. He looks like a mix of like a war dragon and Mars and Agony. Like it, he looks phenomenal. I, if you're playing this chapter, if you're gonna play this chapter, I suggest you play literally just to look at him. He looks amazing. He's probably my favorite out of the five, or the reborn dragons we already saw, which I think is actually only four. Out of the four we've seen, he definitely has my favorite design. Okada talked about at one point about Agni being his favorite, I believe he said he was his favorite character, not even just his favorite dragon. He said he was one of his favorite characters as a whole. He looks amazing. But they attack together and they defeat the twins and the twins kind of just like run off, disappear, same as before where they don't kill them but they beat them into submission and the party in question is kind of like whatever, they're gone. It jumps to then talking to Finlorda at his house and they kind of arrive at Finlorda's house and when they do, he starts by saying that he's sorry to not. And everyone's kind of like, why are you saying you're sorry to not? And then he says, because you weren't born in so you weren't born in Solberia, you were born here, and I took you out of your homeland. And then it ends. Like, it ends on a cliffhanger. We jump to this part, which has two random story chapters here, or two random, rather, fight chapters, which I don't know why they were here. It's kind of just, like, spacing for no reason. But we enter the final chapter, where he talks about how, essentially... Not was a gifted fairy that had a large connection to mana in her in her norm base form. 
And because of this, he wanted her to spy on Griffnell. Or not Griffnell, rather the prince. <laughs> Sorry, Griffnell's my name. But he wanted them to spy on the prince. And everyone's kind of like, oh, that's really messed up. Because he basically talks about how he can view the world through Knott's memories and Knott's eyes. And Knott gets really uncomfortable and everyone starts screaming at him. Shell then cuts in and basically tells everyone to shut up because if they don't shut up, he can't tell the story, which was extremely funny and honestly accurate because a lot of the time people will be explaining something, people will get upset at them, and then they'll just keep talking over them and you can't even understand what's going on. Shell was literally just like, no, we're literally just shut up so we can figure out what's going on here. And now gets very, um, Shell gets very upset at him because she's like, my patience is wearing thin at this point. We then go into the actual reveal of Eden's origin, where we find out that Eden is not a natural born being. He is actually seemingly a synthetic being made from fairy magic and the flesh of the other. And it kind of ends on that cliffhanger of saying that he's the flesh of the other. Now, I personally believe that what's happening here is that the fairies believe that this is the flesh of the other and it's actually not if i had to guess what's going on here we recently got a raid event for the two and a half year anniversary where the end of that raid event led to the sword of dragalia being shattered across basically the land and one part landing in the fairy kingdom now this sword of dragalia was the pack stone between, I believe, Midgard Stormer Zero and Alberius. The, the, it was believed to be the pack stone between Elysium and Alberius, but it actually isn't. It's the pack stone, or rather, Alberius and Ilya, but it was actually the pack stone between Midgard Stormer Zero and Alberius, if I understand correctly. But essentially, the sword breaks and part of it's in the Fairy Kingdom. If I had to guess what's happening here, I would assume that that shard, which the fairies might have presumed was the other and actually wasn't, is what made. Yudin, and it's what allows him to have such a connection not only to Midgar, but also to Elysium himself. And that's kind of where all this connection is going to lead. I feel like at the, when they reach the top of this, for the Tree of Light, or the Tree of Life rather, and they get the Dawn Shard and they kind of all converge and Bahamut shows up and Elysium shows up, that's what it's going to lead to, is the fact that Yudin is basically a byproduct of a pack stone that was broken and then reforged with him kind of being the molding for it. So all in all, a pretty interesting chapter. I thought that they were going to lead with Yudin kind of being like the son of Finlorda, but actually that's not the case at all. It seems to be that he is just connected to these dragons. He's kind of like a fairy dragon hybrid. But the part that's most interesting is that when they're talking about spying on him, Finlorda says, I needed to make sure nothing would happen to your body. So I feel like maybe when we get to chapter 20, which will be... They did this giant transformation of Eden where he's in his current clothes like this. I feel like we might get another revival or another redesign of Eden, maybe where he has fairy wings, maybe where he has dragon wings. It'd be cool to see him kind of as this dragon hybrid kind of character, maybe even being infected with like dragons here or something, you know. There's a lot of things that can come out of this. So I'm pretty excited to see what they'll do or how they'll treat this. But all in all, I'm very excited to see where the story leads. Uh, I don't think we'll get a free character this chapter, if I'm being completely honest. It doesn't seem to be any kind of indication of one. There's no one that I would see other than Finlorda or Gantav. But even then, neither of them really see like they would join now. So, all in all, it's going to be pretty interesting to see where this chapter leads next. I'm really looking forward to the next month as a whole of the event and of the story. But yeah, that's going to be it for me for today. Kind of a longer video, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.